we cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. And those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. And if you say, with profound gratitude and great humility, I accept your nomination for presidency of the United States. December 21st, 2010, I looked up and I saw a decapitated blood red head, looked like, floating over the shoulders of Orion at 2.22 in the morning. Oh, by the way, 2.22 in the morning Central Standard Time is 3.22 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. 322 is the coveted number of the Skull and Bone Society, of which the whole Bush family has been strongly associated with, as was Carrie. Two Illuminists, 322. What's that? A skull? A decapitated head on top of a pile of bones? 322. What was happening in Iraq at that very moment? Iraq had just announced the foundation of its newly formed government. And the entire planet, you can look this up for yourself, shook. The, the seismographic monitors that check earthquake activity around the world, Every one of them went into the black that night. What's going on? I don't know. After nearly nine years, our war in Iraq ends this month. Today, I'm proud to welcome Prime Minister Maliki, the elected leader of a sovereign, self-reliant, and democratic Iraq. In the coming years, it's estimated that Iraq's economy will grow even faster than China's or India's. Here's my dinars. I got them. Well, you know, look, I'm I from can't... the Trade Bank of Iraq, the only ATM in the country. Uh, I, look, this is a country oh, that's resource-based, that right. obviously um, has tremendous aid by the U.S., but could be very self-sufficient with all these oil uh, companies that we've been talking about that are exploring, that are exploring, they're about to explore there. And so I told my viewer, look, I can't fight it. I would like to know how best to get it, and it would really be great if you know these guys set up these ETFs all the time. How about an ETF right. to play the dinar? That would really be the best way to go. For the first time in two decades, Iraq is scheduled to host the next Arab League summit, and what a powerful message that will send throughout the Arab world. And finally, we're partnering for regional security, for just as Iraq has pledged not to interfere in other nations, other nations must not interfere in Iraq. Iraq's sovereignty must be respected. And let us never forget those who gave us this chance. The untold number of Iraqis who've given their lives. More than one million Americans, military and civilian, who have served in Iraq. Nearly 4,500 fallen Americans who gave their last full measure of devotion. Tens of thousands of wounded warriors and so many inspiring military families. People ask me, are we right. making Iraq safe for the Antichrist or safe for democracy? And right. it's a little bit of both. This is an extraordinary achievement. Nearly nine years in the making. We're building a new partnership between our nations. America continues to maintain a high presence in the country with the largest U.S. embassy in the world located in the capital, Baghdad, with 15,000 members of staff. Before they leave, U.S. forces will have to transfer dozens of bases to the Iraqis and dispose of or ship out thousands of vehicles. Sometimes it's too cumbersome to bring a lot of this equipment back to the U.S., so a lot of it's left on bases. We're leaving over 500 military bases to the Iraqis, both to the Iraqi security forces and also to the government. This is a happy occasion for all of us. It is considered one of the most important days for the Iraqi army and Iraqis, which is the day of handing over Sania base from the friendly side to the Iraqi army. Yeah, this is a happy day. Handing over the base from the friendly side to the Iraqi army. Do you hear what Obama said? In the coming years, Iraq's economy is poised to outperform China and India. And Iraq's sovereignty must be respected. We must not interfere with Iraq. Do you see why I say that unfortunately it feels to me like the United States is playing on the wrong team when it comes to the end times? We are setting up the rise of Babylon and the resurrection of the Antichrist. And it all appears to be tied back to 322. 
The blood red lunar eclipse I talked about in that video there uh, of December 21st, 2010 happened at 3.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as Iraq Babylon was announcing its new fully formed government and the entire planet shook. I actually believe, you know, everybody was trying to figure out what's going to happen on December 21st, 2012. It seems like it, for the most part, was a dud. Nothing happened. I actually believe that the real event was two years prior. That was the real event. In fact, you could go to stellarium.org and download the free software. It allows you to track the movement of the sun, moon, and stars. Remember Jesus, what the Bible says? That's where the, he puts those things there for us to watch. If you take that free software from stellarium.org, download it, go back in the software to uh, negative 2, September 11th is the birth of Christ, I believe. I believe Jesus was born on September 11th, negative 2 on the software. Um, if that's true, that it is negative 2, because the reason I say that, September 11th, 3 BC, or negative 2 on the calendar, is because that stellar alignment that you'll see is exactly what you read in Revelation chapter uh, 12, where it talks about 12, a woman clothed with the sun, 12 stars at her head, and the moon at her feet. That exact alignment happens on September 11th, negative 2, or 3 BC. The signs and symbols that are used in Revelation 12 are well-known astronomical symbols. Here's a superimposed picture over it. Now we have Scorpio and Libra, the scales, but in the ancient times this was one known as the dragon. Uh, you have a very small window of time where all of these things can be present at the same time where everything is accounted for. But the sun was clothing the woman, the king star, king planet in Leo, the sign for the tribe of Judah. All of these things did occur in a year that fits well for Jesus' birth, and that is 3 BC. The real sort of interesting thing about 3 BC is, is since this concatenation of signs uh, can only occur in an 80-minute window. We know exactly uh, the date of the birth of the Messiah in 3 BC, and that date is September 11th. So if it's true that, that the software is correct and negative too, then I believe December 21st, 2012 that everybody's been looking for actually happened on December 21st, 2010. And if you think about everything that happened that night, with the blood-red moon over the shoulders of Orion, the entire planet shook, all the internet seismic servers going into the black as Iraq is announcing its fully formed government. Shortly after that, they announced the 13th sign of the zodiac, Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus was known for raising Orion from the dead and emptying Hades. What follows the fourth horse? Hades follows behind the fourth horse. And then we had birds falling from the sky and fish beaching themselves by the millions. All that happened after December 21st, 2010. But for the most part, it went under the radar. You know, people are like, oh, wow, that's interesting. What's on American Idol? But if all of those things would have taken place a couple months ago, everybody would be talking about it. So it is my feeling that the real September or December 21st, 2012 was actually in 2010. That's, uh, that's the, the, kind of the assumption that I'm working on right now, anyway. I suggest that you read Executive Order 13603 which just so happens to add up to 13. They love these numbers, these guys. The National Defense Resources De Preparedness Order that was written on 3-16-12, but posted to the Federal Register on 3 2 March 22nd. It basically gives the government the right to literally seize everything. Food, water, drugs, health facilities, services and supplies, transportation, energy, etc. in the event of a national emergency, which they have the power to declare. Whatever that may be. They could probably cause it in true Hegelian-like fashion. See also 322 Secret Society's Depopulation and the Healthcare Plan by Jay Wiedner for some other interesting things to check out. Now, there was a lot of talk about a microchip that was supposedly going to become mandatory on 322.13 next month. Um, that notion came from verbiage in an older healthcare bill that did not pass. As I understand it, the one that did pass did not include the same requirement, but that doesn't mean it's not very much still on their minds. If they put it in there one time, that means they want, to, they want it there. They want all of us to be chipped. Recently, Skull and Bonesman John Kerry, as I mentioned earlier, was appointed by Obama uh, to be the new Secretary of State. So even though Obama doesn't appear to have ties, the, the agenda will move forward. 
I'm fully convinced that there is a 3-2-2 agenda at work. And when your eyes are open to the, to the fact that secret societies are very active at doing the devil's work, you begin to see evidence of it nearly everywhere. As soon as your eyes are open to it, you're going to see it everywhere, especially in TV shows and the movies. They love to put stuff out in plain sight, and when your eyes open to see it, it's everywhere. You, you're going to see it repeatedly. I've become convinced that the entertainment industry is absolutely the propaganda wing of the Illuminati. Goebbels would be proud. Um, and let me just say, you cannot believe everything you see on TV. And right, I'm going to show you a, few, a clip here in a minute. But I believe there's a reason why we call it TV. It's a television. They're telling you a vision, right? And they may even be time warners. They're warning you about the time with their all-seeing eye of Nimrod as their logo. <laughs> as we surf the channels, right, with our remote control. You know what? You're the one being remotely controlled by the people that are telling their vision to you. Guys, you cannot believe everything you see on TV. I put this short video together here, right here. I did this with cheap camera equipment, my home computer, and about $1,500 worth of off-the-shelf software. This guy was not wearing a tuxedo, so I put one on him. We were sitting in my car with a green screen, talking, and then I simulated us getting into a car wreck. This is a custom animation that I made. I went to Google, found an image of a cockpit, and made it the cockpit to the animation I created to make a jet flying through, through the clouds. And we got our friend Walter to sit in my living room, and I told him just to follow my hand. Watch my hand, Walter. Then I put him inside the cockpit with a heads-up display like Iron Man. Even changed the lighting. who has never flown a jet before in his life was literally being programmed with the experience of air-to-air -air combat right before we are. Don't believe it just because you saw it on TV because they have a lot better equipment and a lot more money. We have cinema quality HD cameras, cinema quality HD lenses, an extensive lighting system with dimmers, a sophisticated audio system and gear, and everything else you're likely to need, on site and ready to go. Do elite quality green screen production from our huge three-walled pre-lit cyclorama and put our amazing Ultimat 11 HD chroma keyer to work. Or, better yet, use our HD 3D virtual studio system along with our industry leading encoder cam and coded camera crane and save hundreds of thousands of dollars on set construction costs alone. In fact, our set designer also designed sets for NBC, CNBC, and CNN. cannot believe what you're seeing on TV. They are using it as a weapon against you and convincing you to uh, enslave yourself <laughs> by the things that they're showing us. You need to start questioning things. You really do.